Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Shaheem San. Shaheem, how are we doing? I'm doing great, Gabe. How are you? Another day in paradise. Uh, you know, Shaheem, we, we've uh, been talking. We actually had a folks. We had to reschedule, unfortunately, this uh, uh, this conversation. So I'm excited about this one because this gentleman is not just named Shaheem, but he actually has another name that we're going to get into in a bit, but we're not going to talk about the name that he's been endowed with. First, Shaheem, give us a little background. Who is Shaheem San? Tell us, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so my name is Shaheem Shan. I'm an entrepreneur. I've been doing the entrepreneurship game since, man, since I was born, but really since the early 90s. My parents came here to the United States as immigrants from Iran. I started my first company when I was in my teens, a company with a product called Herbal Ecstasy. It was the first legal alternative to ecstasy and created over a billion dollars in revenue. I went on from there to inventing all the technology that has now become digital vaporization. So anybody that vapes that technology arose from technology that I built. And from there, I moved on to the Amazon space, building Amazon companies, teaching other people how to build seven, eight figure companies that they can sell in a couple of years and move on to the next thing, which is one of my favorite things, real estate investing. And currently, I'm the founder of a startup called Podcast Cola, where we get people booked on great shows just like this one, Gabriel. So if somebody has a high ticket product or service, a business, and they're looking for a way to market it, as you know, podcasts have exploded. And the best thing I think that any entrepreneur can do is to start selling through storytelling. And the way you do that is by being on podcasts. And that's what we do at Podcast Cola. You know, folks, I got to tell you, I've been I've been very fortunate enough to work with Podcast Cola for the last kind of a year or so, uh, and they have been absolutely but phenomenal in regards to the quality of individuals they have been sending my way. So, really, folks that are listening, you should really thank Podcast Cola for a lot of the guests that you have been hearing on the Shades of Entrepreneurship, including Shaheem. In fact. I would love let's let's take a step back because one of the things I mentioned um, is folks he 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 was dubbed again this is a unique name the Willy Wonka of Generation X by the London Observer so I really want to kind of get into that first let's talk about that first kind of entrepreneurship endeavor that you jumped into uh, specifically the ones with with the um, the ecstasy how did what where the heck did that idea come from and how did you bring it to fruition Yeah, I was a kid. I was left home, wasn't getting along, and decided that I wanted to try to find a way to get rich quick. Uh, of course, the best way to get rich is quick, in case anybody was wondering. So I was trying to find a way to do that, and I kind of looked around me, and, and none of the ways really were for me. I didn't really have a high school education even. I'd gotten a GED. I was just trying to find ways, and I got involved in the electronic music scene. And through the electronic music scene, I realized that people were taking a drug called ecstasy. I had never done a drug in my life. I didn't all throughout my 20s. And I thought, wow, what if there was a way I could create a legal version of this? And at the same time, the supply of ecstasy had dried up, but the demand was there. And I just went about doing it. You know, how you do something is by doing it. And so I went out there. Uh, I, I wrote about this in my book. I wrote a book called Billion, How He Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult. is being made into a film now by Paris Hilton's company. Oh, wow. 10 Productions. So I'm very excited about that. That film will be coming out in the next couple of years. They're just getting ready to start production on that. And there's a book. You can check out the audio book. It's on Audible. It's called Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult. I really enjoyed writing it. And it and it documents kind of the story of everything I went through, you know, from dealing to dealing with the Japanese mafia, the yakuza, to finding uh, rare and hard to find plants to make up this magic formula, to doing shows with people like the Red Hot Chili Peppers and the Beastie Boys, and doing over a million dollars in one Lollapalooza event. We talk about it all, but that's basically what happened. I was a kid, and really, you know, it was a combination of getting lucky and being at the right place at the right time and not taking no for an answer. I think it was a combination of that stuff that led me to become very successful in the world that I was in. 
You know, one thing I, I love that you said right there was the, the difference between you and everybody else is you just did it, you know, and I think that is the true emphasis of entrepreneurship is, and I tell this to folks on the, on the show all the time that'll listen, if you have an idea, go out and share your idea with other people, get proof of concept, see if it's really going to work and then go out and try to actually do it because the only difference between you and somebody else is they're doing it and you're not right. Uh, even if you share your idea, somebody else probably already has that idea, but the difference is you're going to go do it. Yeah, uh, really the best, like I tell people this with podcasting all the time, right? How do you get good at podcasting? People always ask me, they're like, man, you know, I, I really want to start doing podcasts, Shaheen. And I know you guys can get us booked on like the best shows, but how do I get booked on podcasts? Right. And then once I get booked, how do I get good? And the answer is you learn by doing it. You get good at doing the thing by doing the thing which is what I've been focused on. You know, we've got a back-end course where we teach people, hey, these are how you have your talking points. You need to have a call to action. Uh, you know, by the way, check out my book, Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult, or check out our service, Podcast Cola. We get people booked on great shows like this. Make sure you have your CTA. Make sure you mention it five times, but it's gotta be natural and it's gotta be organic. And you can't sound salesy because people aren't listening to that show to just be sold some stuff by you. People are listening to these shows because they want to pick up some value. Like, hey, man, my time is valuable. There's a million things. I could be listening to Joe Rogan. I could be listening to Lex Friedman. I could be listening to Andrew Huberman. These guys are top rated dudes. Right? But I'm listening to you, Gabriel Flores. So I'm listening to you because I think you might have something that I see in you that other people might not see, and that might give me an edge. So I tell people, lead with value, but don't forget to ask for the sale. Man, I could not have said it better myself. And folks, again, if you forget what Shaheem said in regards to his bill and how to become the king of the thrill pill cult, I'll have this information on the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter so you can actually subscribe on the shades of e.com. So make sure to do that. Now, Shaheem, how did you go now from doing pills to moving on to the next venture? You, you, how, that was a very unique pivot because it's a completely new industry. Yeah, I, I thought about this a lot. And I, I, I don't know, man, like, I think to myself, dude, like I've got such a goldfish attention span when it comes to companies. <laughs> and when you look, when you're in your teens and your twenties, a stretch of five years to start a company, to launch a product, that's like nothing. But you start getting in your thirties. You're like, man, how many more of these five-year slots am I going to get? You're still cool. By the time you get into your forties, like I am, I'm like, man, I got two, three, maybe four of these five-year companies. So. I say no to almost every opportunity that comes my way. And some of them are really freaking great, but I say no because I just know that I have to make the next few things I have count more than anything else that I've done in the past. And to your point, when I came up with digital vape position, there was no such thing. You couldn't find a vape. There was no vape. There was no like, you, you had smoke shops that sold, you know, pipes and bongs and paraphernalia and stuff like that. And you had medical places that sold nebulizers, which are little devices for people who have asthma and, and lung conditions. And that was it. And so I came around and I was like, huh, people have been smoking for, I don't know, all of human humanity, 50,000 years, 100,000 years, people have been smoking <laughs> stuff. Like there's gotta be a better way. There's gotta be a way where we can get what we're trying to get, the nicotine, the cannabinoids, the medicine, without getting the smoke tar and carbon monoxide. Has anyone ever tried that? And I did some research, I found some patents, I got my own patent, uh, and we built a company out of nothing, out of absolutely nothing, we built that company. And they were costing us 25 bucks to make. I was selling them for $400 a piece. The first vapes were the size of a ketchup bottle. And I exited that company. That was the, one of the first vape companies to ever go public. So it was, uh, it was a pretty exceptional, uh, company. And, you know, it's, it's, I think now would I do it? I don't think so. I tell people this all the time. I really feel that innovation is a loser's game. If you want to make money, stick to what works. Let somebody else reinvent the wheel. And when, look, and when I say loser's game, I don't mean that uh, anybody that innovates is a loser. What I mean is if you're interested in making money, like real money, 
Find an industry where somebody's winning and just be a little bit better than that. Steve Jobs did not inv invent the smartphone. There were a lot of people who had it before, but you know what he did do? He told a better story. And that makes all the difference. And I teach that to people who are in my Amazon course. By the way, if anyone's interested, reach out to me. I'll give you my course for free. It's normally a few hundred bucks, but anybody that wants to, that's heard it on Shades of Grey, uh, uh, Shades of, what is it? Shades of Entrepreneurship? I think Shades of Grey. You can call me Shades of Grey. I got 50 of them. Don't worry. All we right. Got yeah. That might be, that might be a different thing, <laughs> but you, yeah, just put shades, put shades, shades in the subject heading. I'll give my direct email. It's D A R K Z E S S at gmail.com. That's dark zest at gmail.com. Just let me know you want the Amazon course. I'll give that to you for free, but I teach people this all the time in my Amazon course, my students who I teach how to build these seven and eight figure companies. So they don't have to sell their hours anymore is that really you want to find something that's already selling and just do it a little bit better because that's what we've come to. And innovation, leave that for the big companies. Leave that for the gigantic Apples and the Microsofts and the companies that have endless revenue. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't win with innovation. A lot of people are going to win, but it's kind of like saying, dude, I'm a good looking guy. I, I am smart. And you know what? I've taken a lot of acting classes. I'm going to be in a blockbuster Hollywood movie and become a big star. It's not going to happen, right? It, it, the chances of that happening are less than you winning the lottery. And the chances of that happening are less than you being hit by lightning. So it's something that's, that's not within your control. But what's within your control is being able to find opportunities, vulnerabilities in the market, and to make slight shifts in how that story is told. And if you can do that, you can make millions. And I tell people this all the time, like that's the game. That's the game you want to play. Yeah. You know, I, I, I could not agree more. The riches are in the niches. In fact, I was having a conversation yesterday. I was uh, inviting an individual onto our board for a nonprofit. And one of the things he was telling me about to your point uh, was basically taking the flight simulation that we currently have. It's about, you know, if you want to do a helicopter flight simulation, it's like $2 million per hour or something, something ridiculous. So he was able to create a system that uses VR to do the flight simulations for a fraction of the cost, which is going to allow us to bring more pilots, more education. It's also safety. Now we're trying to get it, you know, he's trying to get it FDA approved. How do you get on the Apple vision? To your point, he's not reinventing the wheel. He's just doing something a little bit better, right? It, it's already there. It's a, just doing it a little bit better, folks. Now, Shaheen, one of the things you mentioned, you know, you, you're, you're building up, you're growing these, these programs. You had a couple of exits successfully. How do you market something like, you know, you mentioned the, uh, the uh, the um the disposable uh, cartridges things that you're 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 doing I mean that's again something that is very novel it's not out how do you you know effectively sell a product or service like that when it doesn't even have a market yet that's the problem that's the problem with innovation and the problem with innovation is that you have to be the one educating the public about how to use it, which is why I say I got lucky and I was able to get into niche markets and get out there and hustle and create a sales team and sell it into an existing infrastructure, which was the smoke shops, the head shops, and then to the pharma companies for the drug delivery devices to patent it, to really get it out there. Most people won't get that lucky. And then the problem we had of scaling from 10 million to hundred million was how do we tell people they need this? I mean, we would go to conventions where people were like weed smokers. I'd be like, dude, do you want to try to vape? They'd be like, what? No, no, no. I'm going to Tommy Chong's at the booth next door. I'm going to go next door and smoke some weed. What are you talking about? Like it just went right over their head. But then when it hit and everybody started talking about it, everybody wanted it. And, and those same people were willing to pay $400 because they knew it made their material last longer. It was cleaner on their lungs. It was better for the health. You know, I don't agree with vaporization now with the vapes that they have now with all the chemicals that are in there from China and they're cheaply made. But the way that we had it really was better for you.
Yeah, folks, I'm gonna be completely transparent. I'm a I'm a I'm a pot smoker back in the day, and so I would try the vapes when they first came out, and I would say the quality. I actually stopped using vapes quite a while ago. The quality has certainly diminished quite a bit. Uh, you know, and, and I think that also goes back to the marketing to telling the story. Uh, you, you know, you mentioned it, uh, the importance of when you're selling a product or services to tell a story. So talk, talk to us a little bit about it, specifically with the podcast world. Why are podcasts the most efficient way to sell a product or service in your opinion? Yeah. So again, you want to sell something now. How are you going to sell it? All right. We got a great service, man. We're the best influencer marketing. We're the best sports nutrition. We're the best, you name it. How are you going to sell it? So obviously the best way for us, especially if we're in a high ticket consulting, if we're speakers, if we have an agency where we're doing agency work, design work, anything like that is word of mouth referrals. Here's the problem with word of mouth and referrals. It doesn't scale. How many times can you go like a poor cousin to your customers and go, dude, who else do you know who could use my service? Here's, here's the Starbucks gift card. You can't do it. It doesn't scale. It's not a recipe for growth. It's a recipe for staying in business, maybe. So you got to advertise. You got to market. What are you going to do? Facebook ads, Instagram ads? The guy's looking at your ad that you just spent a ton of money making, and then a girl in a miniskirt shows up, and he's gone. He's already, <laughs> he's already out the door, right? Or a dancing monkey or both, a girl in a miniskirt and a dancing monkey, and you're done. I, I just watched this chimp chimp thing, the Tiger King guy put Oh, on. man, I saw that. It was crazy. Go, Max. It's, it's a crazy thing. <laughs> It's so crazy. It's so crazy. I can't believe these people exist. I think he makes them up. I, I don't believe these people exist. So, you know, attention spans are short. So you sell through story the way our ancestors did, the way people have done for hundreds of years. If I tell you, buy my thing, you go, hey, man, F you. I, you know, who are you? You just want my money. But if I say, hey, let me tell you a story. You know, my dog, he was so sick. Little Fido, he was sick. And we, that we, we were pretty sure. We went to the vet. He said, we got to put him down. And then all of a sudden, he got into this bag of supplements on the floor. We didn't even know what it was. The next day, he was up and running like a little pup. And it was insane. It was crazy. And he got better right away. And he started eating all his food. And he had babies. And everything was great. Isn't that a cool story? Right? What's your question that you have from that story, Gabe? Oh, what, what, was, what, was, what was he taking? What was the supplement? Boom. Now I got you. Now you're yep. mine. Yep. Right? Yeah, I love so, it. Fill in the blank. It was CBD. It was uh, the glucosamine. It was uh, grape seed extract. Doesn't matter, right? Because at that point, whatever you're going to tell them, they're going to go, huh, this guy's not trying to sell it to me. He just told me this, this endearing story. So selling your service, your product on podcasts is the same thing. You're selling through story. Now, yeah, of course, you got to have a good story. And that's what, what hiring a professional agency like Podcast Cola, podcastcola.com, by the way, for anyone that's interested, helps because our team gets together and we extract your story. We figure out what's interesting about you. And then you go on and you tell that story and you don't sell. You, you just story tell. And people go, man, that guy is cool. I want to learn about what he does. I want to learn about his Amazon course. I want to learn about podcasting. And you offer something for free, you bring value, and those people will come to you. And even if the people listening might not be the right person, guess what? Cousin, cousin Janie has a, a new consultancy that she started doing the best interior design, and she doesn't know how to get customers. So she's going to come to you and, and want to hire your service. So that's what you do. You build audience through storytelling. It's what Seth Godin talks about, pull marketing. Right? It used to be push marketing where you would go and try to shove a message down people's throat what, via advertising, right? We'd be like watching the Super Bowl. We'd be like, hey, man, you want a Budweiser? Hey, you want a beer? Hey, you want a beer? Do you want a beer now? How about now? Do you want a beer now? And that got old. The internet came in and was like, yeah, we don't need to watch commercials anymore. So now there's a real battle for your attention. And it's gotten more expensive to get that 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 attention, to get that call to action, to get that sale, to convert. And that's where we're at. Nothing better than podcasting to make that happen. Yeah. You know, this is something I tell folks, you know, entrepreneurs that work, go through our nonprofit, LatinoFounders.com folks, our business accelerator program. When they go through that and we talk about the pitch, 
we really talk about making sure your story resonates with the community that you're telling it to. And that's exactly what Shaheem did. Talked about the dog, talked about that personal connection, talked about everybody at some point probably had a pet, right? And so they understand like losing that pet and the the connection you have, you know, from a personal connection and, and really want them to see them healthy. And so that's why you begin to think, and I really love the way you presented it, uh, Shaheem, and saying, you know, you kind of left it open-ended where you didn't actually deliver the product or service that you're actually discussing, you kind of left it up to the, the, the individual you're telling the story to, to kind of ask that question. And I really, really enjoyed that. Now, in your, in, you know, you've been doing this for some time. What, what, what some, what are some things that an individual that is telling their story that is marketing their brand product or service? What are some things they should do and things they should stop doing? Yeah, so if you're trying to market a, a, a product or a service, I'd say the, the, the biggest mistake that people make is, and it's funny, I tell this to young guys all the time. I'm like, dude, you, you can't get married before you date. And selling a customer is no different, really. Love that. That's a great analogy. People want to go on podcasts. They want to be like, hey, order my thing, buy my thing. And they're like, man, I didn't get a thousand orders. And I'm like, yeah, you're not going on there to sell. You're going on there to build an audience, to build a fearless, relentless audience that will buy whatever it is that you're selling. Like, I don't care if you buy my product or service. What I, what I care about is that you join my group that you become part of my ecosphere and that I can tell you, I can market to you, I can feed you stuff, I can have you watch content, and then you think it's your idea to buy it. Again, pull marketing, not push marketing. That's the biggest mistake that people make. The second mistake that people make is they think that it happens fast. They look at all these influencers, these big guys on there, people like Papit David and Joe Rogan, they're like, man, that guy puts something out, he gets 50 million views and you know, he's huge. I want to be huge like that. It's like, well, do you know Papa David, for example, I, I love his content value attainment. He worked for five years, relentlessly putting out content, getting relatively few views, nobody watching his stuff until something hit. Same with Rogan. Rogan didn't hit right away. His first episodes took forever to get people to watch. And, and you can't quit. You got to think about it as building. Now we have a lot more tools and there's agencies like ours that help you accelerate by borrowing other people's audience and bringing them to your platform. And that's what Podcast Cola accelerates at. But back then there wasn't any of that. And still to this day, it takes time. So you got to think of things minimum one year timeline. If you're launching something, it's going to be a year. Don't think, hey, I'm going to start guesting on podcasts. I'm going to start my own podcast. I'm going to take off. How long did it take you for your podcast to gain some momentum, Gabriel? Oh, yeah, we're almost it's, it's, it, to that point. We're almost at year three, you know, and it's starting to gain momentum. And, and going back to your what you did mention earlier in this conversation is, folks, that that first product of creativity isn't going to be the best, right? It's going to there's going to be some work that needs to be done. But if you want to get better, you got to continuously do it. If you go listen to my first couple episodes of my podcast, they weren't the greatest. They probably had, you know, better quality now than they did previously. But again, I didn't stop. I kept on going and kept on improving and kept on learning. And that's, that's really what Shaheem is talking about is really just not giving up and persevering through these, through very unique opportunities of entrepreneurship. It's true. It's true. And at the end of the day, it kind of comes, comes out that it comes down to not giving up, not quitting. But I'm going to put a caveat in there that most people don't hear very often, but knowing when to quit. Sometimes you need to be able to shift, and that's not really quitting. If you're trying something and it's not working, like one thought is, hey, just keep plowing through it. But what if you're at a brick wall? Like you don't keep banging your head at a brick wall thinking it's getting softer. It's your head that's breaking. So at a certain point, you got to say, hey, what I'm doing isn't working. Let me try something different. And at the same time, you need to have multiple streams of income. And if you don't have multiple streams of income, you're going to have problems in this day and age. You got to have 
I tell people this all the time, some money in real estate. If you don't know how to do that, you can learn. There's people online who teach that. Even if you don't, you have very little money, you can still get involved in real estate, right? You can start an Airbnb business. You need to have a job or some kind of revenue that keeps the stress off you, right? Keeps the diapers on the kids, keeps the food on the table. So you're not stressing, right? The goal is to get away from the job, get away from selling the hours. But the easiest way to make money is number three is having an e-commerce business. And that's why we teach people how to do that. A very little investment under 10K investment, you can start an Amazon company and you can launch that company. And can that company be worth 2 million, 5 million, 10 million in a couple of years time? Yes, I've done it. Can you sell that company for that kind of money in a few years? Yeah, I've done it. We do it all the time. So those are the things, right? That you got to know. And you got to have some totally passive income, some income that's in the markets. And then you've got the four pillars of what I call success. And, you know, okay, you wake up in the morning and Amazon's not doing great. No problem. All your other stuff is still solid. You wake up in the morning and real estate's down a little. No problem. You've got all your other stuff. You got your e-commerce. But in that way, you become bulletproof. And I teach people this all the time. I teach it in my Amazon course. And I teach it to the people that I mentor and coach. You know, I really like that. It's essentially, you know, what's the definition of insanity? And it's doing the same thing over and over again, right? You're, like yeah. you mentioned, just pounding your head against the wall. And, you know, I, you mentioned real estate. You know, you, you actually, again, you, you mentioned your four pillars. You have your e-commerce, you got your job, you got your real estate, you got your 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 uh, your investments. But let's talk about the real estate transition because, again, another unique pivot from you know, product to real estate. How did that pivot occur? I think there's probably been more millionaires made in this country from real estate, probably by volume than anything else. And if you're somebody who wants to step up the ladder in life, I feel like there's no better investment. I love single family homes. I love commercial. I love multifamily residential. I think the best of all time is single family residential because there will always be a need for homes for families to live in. Market's bad, people need a place to live. Right? Market's good, people want a place to live. There's always be a time and a place for real estate. And I like the dirt business. I like the business of having something under you that has weight. And there's nothing for the middle class, especially, I would say, um, that can push you up that ladder quicker and more sustainably than real estate. So I tell people this all the time. If you're making some money, put some of it in real estate or, or go out there and plan to buy some real estate. It's very hard. You never heard anybody go, man, I bought a house. Uh, for a reasonable price, you know, you know, I did my, there's always the horror stories of people who pay too much for stuff, but you go, man, I bought a reasonable house 10 years ago. I'm so sorry that I bought that now. You never hear that. Yeah. You always hear people saying, I wish I bought more. I wish I bought all the houses on the block. Had I had known the market was going to be like this hindsight. So yeah, you can't do it stupidly. Yeah, of course you can go out there and buy stupid stuff and, and lose money. But in general, if you play your cards, right, there's, there's no safer bet than real estate, in my opinion, especially in America. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think diversification, folks, and you're thinking about that, I, I think that should also apply to your stock picks as well. Diversify your stocks uh, for your uh, offerings. And also remember, like, if, you know, folks that are, you know, concerned or, or hesitant about joining the stock market, look at the last five years of the stock market. It has not gone down. Same with real estate. If you look at a five-year trajectory, you, you tend to do pretty well. Now, Shaheen, you've you've been doing a lot of different entrepreneurial endeavors, and you kind of mentioned there there are some moments of uncertainty during this uh there in this times. Have you ever had a moment of self doubt? I think a lot of that relates to the answer is yes, of course. I, I am having a moment of self doubt right now. I mean, every 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 minute of our lives revolves around asking the question of am I on the right path? And if you're a person who's self-reflective, which is a key to being a successful entrepreneur, meaning you look back and you reflect on your life. Not everybody does that, I realize. Some people just plow through life and you're like, oh, what are you doing? Oh yeah, okay, I'm getting married. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, I'm having kids. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, I'm working nine to five. Okay, cool. What's it all for? Oh, what do you mean? What do you mean? What's it all for? What do you do? And they don't reflect. 
So if you don't take that time to reflect, then maybe you have self-doubt, maybe you don't, maybe you just plow through and then one day your card is called and you're done. And I don't know what the whole thing meant, but you didn't have very much reflection. If you take time to stop and reflect, hey, what's the meaning in these life circumstances? I can speak for myself at least and go, what was that all about? Like I got into this business deal and I made a bunch of money or I, I lost a bunch of money or, you know, those partners were great. I, I'd love to work more with those people because they make me feel good or those partners were terrible. They ripped me off. You know, what, what was that experience about and how does it relate to my life? then you'll know that life isn't about like the movie, the Disney movie success, right? Where you've got this, this up and comings and you're, you're doing something, you're up and coming and you start to do it. And then there's this, it's called the hero's journey. There's this incredible obstacle that seems unsurpassable and you, you, you defeat the obstacle by all measures. And there it is at the end of it, your pot of gold and, and you take it and you live happily ever after, right? Life is about moments of like, man, do I want to work with this person? Do I want to, do I really want to do this? I thought I was going into the cookie business, but the cake business is a lot better. So I'm doubting the cookie business. That's a good thing. Self-doubt could be a good thing. You go, hmm. I thought I'd make $10 million selling cookies. I just talked to a lady. She's the cookie queen of the cookie queen of, of Queens, New York. And she <laughs> sold her company for hundreds of millions of dollars. We talked to her on our, our podcast, Business Story of the Week. And she sold her company for hundreds of millions of dollars making cookies out of her house and, uh, you know, franchising it. And, you know, she did a big thing. But I think to myself, man, you know, like you can pivot, right? You can just pivot. So- yeah, I doubt myself. Is it a bad thing? Probably not, right? I don't doubt myself in the right moments because if you have competency, competency leads to confidence. If you're one of these people who goes out in life and you just BS and game, right? And you're like, man, you know, I can do this, I can do that, right? And then when it comes time to do it, you don't produce because you don't have the competency. Uh, Dunn and Kruger, right? Like, I don't know who that guy is. He's going on all the podcasts talking about quantum physics or whatever. And scientists are just like, he, he doesn't have the competency. So if you don't have the competency, then you won't have the confidence when the time comes. But if you do have the competency, it doesn't mean that self-doubt doesn't hit you. You go, man, am I right for this? Sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're not the right person for that. And it's good. It's good because you're reflecting, you're having that self-doubt, and then you're changing lanes. And that's okay. That's okay in life. The guy who wins isn't the guy who never changes lanes. The guy who wins is the guy who's at the right place at the right time doing the right thing, right? Right action. Yeah. When you think about, you know, when, you, when individuals are listening, they're thinking about how, how would you advise them to begin to think about or place themselves in an opportunity to be at the right place at the right time? It's the four pillars that we talked about. Look, I feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world. Right? I've made hundreds of millions of dollars. My companies have earned over a billion dollars in revenue over time, well over that. And I got everything that I need. I got really lucky. But I'll tell you something. There isn't an ounce of that luck that I didn't hustle and work hard for and create myself. And I think a lot of it comes to following your intuition having humility, seeking mentorship, finding people who've done what you want to do in life and going to them and saying, hey, how do I sign up, right? Do you have a course? Do you have a, a mentorship program? Can I call you every once in a while? And having something valuable to bring to the table makes a big difference there. And most of it is really competency, excellence, persuasiveness, influence, and most important of all of that is network. Getting yourself in the right network with the right people. You know, I, I couldn't agree more in regards to all of those statements. Because again, folks, I think 
when you, your value proposition is going to get people to come to you and, and, and engage with you, but then it's going to be your quality as, as you know, Shane's mentioned, that's going to continue to have people coming back. Right. Uh, and then the way you actually present and market that story uh, again, it's all, it's all comes together and it's all part of your brand and it's all part of your identity. It's all how uh, people were going to remember you as, as an organization, as an entrepreneur, as a, as even a colleague, if, if you're in the entrepreneurial world. Right. So, you know, Shaheem, you, you, you're growing pod cola. You're, you've got the real estate, you got a lot of different things going. What's, what's the goal? You mentioned you got maybe one or two more five-year companies in you. What, what's, what's the, what does the future look like for Shaheem? Yeah, the future is we don't stop. We continue doing what we're doing and what we feel called to do. So we're doing Podcast Cola right now. It's podcastcola.com. I've got the film coming out. I got the book and we keep doing it. My goal is to inspire entrepreneurs to take action and to stop selling their hours. It's, I think, the greatest crime that you can do to yourself is to go to someone and say, here's my time. This is the value on it. I'm going to now sell my hours to you. And that's where you're probably going to be at your weakest. Now, I have no judgment on people who have to do that. You got to feed your family. But there has to be a plan to get out of that, especially in today's age and the gig economy. Everything that we have going, you should be able to put together enough money so that you don't have to sell your hours. And that's the ultimate goal. You know, I, I travel with my family all the time. We traveled three months out of the year. We were in Europe sitting on the coast of Italy. It was gorgeous, probably one of the best beaches ever. And I had my phone and I was doing deals and, and company was running and we were making money while we're sleeping. People were ordering our products on Amazon and that's the life, right? Being able to inspire people uh, and at the same time, create a good family life for myself and my family. That's my, that's my goal, my objective in life. You know, I'm, I'm very interested in this now uh, because one of the things you mentioned is, is selling your hours. I'm, I'm folks, I'm going to be selfish right now. I'm already learning a lot about the, just in this conversation. So folks, if you start hearing me shout out the shades of e.com pretty consistently about five times from when I learned throughout this podcast, that's something you're going to probably see me doing here in the future. But more importantly, I'm also interested in how do I create, you know, reoccurring revenue streams without selling my hours? Yeah, I mean, the easiest way is through an e-commerce store, right? That's, it's the four pillars that we talked about. So one of the most impactful ways, get a hold of me, guys. I'll send you the course for free. Get a hold of me, Gabe. You know, it's uh, darkzess, D-A-R-K-Z-E-S-S -S at gmail.com. And just put shades uh, of entrepreneurship in there, just shades. And let me know you want the course and I'll, I'll send it to you for free. Uh, I think that's the first way. I think the second way would be to have a high ticket product or service that you're selling um, and really just to follow those four pillars, right? The more passive income streams, predictable recurring passive income streams that you can produce, the better off you're going to be in the long term. And especially as we're approaching a downturn in the economy and this inflation is high, people need money. The more you work, the less you make. I tell people that all the time. The more you work, the less you make. You want to get out of selling your hours. Yeah, folks, you got to think of your revenue kind of uh, source as like a lake, right? Uh, and the way, the best way to continue to feed the lake is you have multiple streams kind of going, feeding that lake with multiple water sources, and that's your revenue cycle. So you want a nice fluffy lake where you can water ski on and, and as, as, as Shahim was mentioning, you know, maybe hang out in the beach of Italy, then you really want to have multiple sources of streams of revenue kind of helping support that. Now, Shahim, last question, folks listening. And again, folks, if you, if for those that are listening, if you want this information, you can go ahead and subscribe to the newsletter on the shades of e.com. We'll have Shahim featured on the newsletter as well as a blog post. Now, Shahim, for those folks that are listening that what what advice would you get for folks that maybe are thinking they have an entrepreneurial itch, but they have not jumped it? They have not, you know, jumped full force into the water. What advice would you give them? I think you got to take action. Everything comes down to three things. Again, I write about it, guys. Get my book. Get the Audible book. It's called Billion, How I Became King of the Thruple Cult. You can find it on Audible. I probably make a whole 92 cents for every book that everybody buys, unless you get it on uh, Amazon Unlimited, and then it's free. I get a whole like two cents on that. But I think the book, I think the book will book will help you. And I talk about it. I think everything comes down to 
objectives. What are our objectives? Strategy. What's a strategy we want to use to get to that objective? And tactics. So what are the tactics we're going to use within that strategy? And it's a three-part formula, objective, strategy, tactics. And I recommend that to everybody. I think that's probably the best way. Let's, let's get clarity on your objective is the first step. And then we'll figure out the strategy and the tactics. And reach out to me, guys, if you need help. I love talking to new people and learning more about people who want to be successful. Yeah. And I love that, that kind of layout right there. I think that's the, you know, when you think of business development first, what is your true North, right? That's your value proposition. What are you, what is your goals and aspirations? Okay. And then once you identify your goals tactfully, what do you need to do to accomplish that goal? And sometimes you have to think about the operations as well. Like, well, what do I need to operationally to support these goals? If they're lofty enough to scale to, you know, multi-million dollar company as Shaheem's has done several times now. So, you know, thinking about constantly thinking about evolving folks, thinking about networking, uh, constantly thinking about getting out there and, and putting yourself in uncomfortable situations like a podcast interview, uh, like a public speaking opportunity, because again, you're going to learn a lot. Either you're going to learn you love it, you're going to learn you hate it, or you're going to learn things that you're good or not good at or things you can improve on. Uh, so again, take every moment you have as a learning opportunity. Shaheen, thank you again so much for being on the show. Again, folks, his book is all available digital. You can find it again. I'll have my information on the shades of e.com. So go ahead and subscribe to the newsletter there. Shaheem, any last words before we leave? No, nope, just never stop selling, never stop hustling, and get out there and stop selling your hours or work towards that. And if you guys want to get a hold of me, again, email D-A-R-K-Z-E-S-S -S at gmail.com. The book is Billion, How I Became King of the Throw Pill Cult, available on Amazon and Audible. And if anybody's interested in being a guest on great podcasts like this one, check out podcastcola.com podcastcola.com. Again, folks, this information will be on the Shades of Entrepreneurship website. So please subscribe at the shades of e.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and LinkedIn at the shades of e. And if you're so feeling so kind, you can become a Patreon member for $5 a month to help support the podcast to help me continue to bring on phenomenal guests like Shaheem. Now, Shaheem, I got to tell you, uh, first and this again, personally, thank you so much for everything you have been doing at Podcola. Your team has uh, is remarkable. They were really easy to work with. Uh, they continue to provide me phenomenal guests. So personally, I hope that I'm also living up to the quality of, of uh, expected of your team. Uh, and if I'm not, please do let me know so I can continue to improve because I have nothing but good things to say about the podcast Cola team and all the, the remarkable guests that you have sent my way throughout the year. So Truly, truly, thank you for uh, creating it. Uh, uh, thank you for thinking of me and bringing me into your world. For those folks listening at home, again, please subscribe at theshadesofe.com. Thank you and have a great night.